Welcome back, my name is Last No Meal, and today we're gonna be talking about some extra juicy details and news coming from Cyberpunk 2077. After the end of E3, besides the various screenshots we got and the cinematic trailer, there was a whole influx of information coming from various sources that saw the gameplay demo behind closed doors. If you didn't know already, CDPR is making the demo available to public on PAX West, which runs from August 30th to September 2nd. The reason for for that is to basically polish the gameplay a bit more and also to save something for other conventions, that is how you kinda build and maintain hype. We also got a series of posters about the way of living inside the universe of cyberpunk, cultural aesthetics if you want to call it like that. The first is anthropism, the look of poverty that derives from humans grappling with and struggling against technology and its unforgiving advance. It denotes a lack of designs blending with a general poverty of means and ideas. Their motto is necessity over style, which makes sense, for poor people surviving is more important than anything. Then we have Kitsch, which is the look of a long-lost golden age that people are entirely unwilling or unable to forget. It's flashy, bold and usually cheap, filled with gold-plated cyberware, implant encased in brightly colored plastic and larger-than-life makeup. You can clearly see from their design that this style is more important than substance, you can kinda think about them as people stuck in the 90s when cyberpunk was actually really trendy. After that, we have the corporate substance over style, neo-militarism as CDPR put it, the look of global conflict and corporations jockeying for power, cold, sharp, modern, making everyone look as if they're ready to drop out of an AV cargo door and head straight into combat. Which is kinda true, corporations fight for power all the time, you never know if there could be an assassination attempt or if they are on a mission, this Arasaka officer really does look ready for battle. Then we have Neo Kitsch, where style and substance is equally important, the look of infinite wealth and vanity. Synonymous with luxury, it has been blossoming among the Night City wealthiest elites, those who can afford to buy anything, who can afford to be anything they want to be. Obviously, fast and expensive cars mixed with style is cool. I really wonder if that last car is going to be in the game, might have to uh, acquire it. This shows you the style that you can find in a game like Cyberpunk. The variety is there and I like how they explain everything, it's all there for a purpose and it has a reason, going from clothing to weapons all the way to cars. Now since we're talking about cars, you will be able to call your car like you called Roach in The Witcher 3. I know it sounds strange but cars in 2077 are equipped with AI, that means they are self-driving and if you actually lose your main ride, including the car and the bike, you press a button and there it is. Let's hope we will get some funny glitches compilations, I mean watching Roach was always fun. Also, you will be able to choose from a huge variety of different cars, as you can see here, ranging from the trash ones all the way to supercars, and you will be able to steal ones that you see on the road or in Night City. Aerodynes or flying cars will be in the game, but you won't be able to fly them, they will serve in missions probably, but who knows, maybe some modder is really keen on driving them so they will implement it. You will have street racing in Cyberpunk, that is one of the coolest features in my opinion, and also boxing minigame is confirmed, which is something the Cyberpunk family was discussing a lot on our podcast, and it seems that it will happen. Besides that, you have uh, range shooting, target practicing, you can also attend. Let's also talk about the character creation a bit. Your background is going to be important, for example, like how they mentioned on their Tumblr page that I will link below, is, for example, if you choose to be a corpo and during your game you run into another corpo, you will know how they operate and this will open up new possibilities for dialogue and missions. Also, the game will have different endings and variations to those endings. They even said that you always have to be hesitant because you never know if that decision is small or big and it might bite you in the butt much later in the game or even reward you. Who knows? Even if your friend does the same playthrough with the same background, inventory, etc, they still won't have the same experience, so this gives you a chance to really craft your own unique adventure and it's open for replayability. 
Now let's talk about guns. The game will feature a huge variety of guns, but it will have three major categories. First one are tech rifles, they have powerful impact. Then smart guns, where bullets track your enemies, that is something we saw in the gameplay demo, the previous one. And power weapons that can be charged up. Also yes, sniper rifles will be in the game. Weapon customization will be there also, and I really wonder about the parts and details we will be able to put on our gun, because I am certain that damage and, you know, reload speed will differ depending on the parts you're, you have on your weapon. Also, everyone wondering about melee weapons, now besides the cyberware like Mantis Blades and Monowire that we saw, uh, you will be also using katanas and I even heard you will be able to use a broken bottle, so things around you might be useful depending on your playstyle. For the end, I want to mention two things. First one is about Johnny Silverhand. He has the most dialogue in the game after V, so he is extremely important and will always be in that chip. So you won't get anyone else, you only get Johnny Silverhand in that chip. His agenda is still unknown, obviously besides burning cities. Uh, Keanu in an interview mentioned that you might be in his way, or he might be in yours. That is for you to decide, so not all dialogue options and choices you make will, you know, is going to be where Johnny says, oh yeah, I completely agree with that, so expect the unexpected. Don't become too friendly, he is not a nice person overall, that is what most people don't understand. And the second thing about the areas outside Night City. The area outside Night City is called Badlands, this area is filled with destroyed buildings and objects after all the droughts and things that happened the past 50 years, uh, from 2020 to 2077. Badlands are the home of nomads, they roam the waste, so expect to run into them if you go out and explore. But hey, that is everything we have for today, there is so much info to sort out, I don't want to have long videos, but expect them to be in parts like this. So don't forget to subscribe for more Cyberpunk 2077, and tell me down below what you think about all of this. Also join our amazing community on Twitter and Discord, and as always, stay breathtaking everyone, bye bye.